were listening to episode 174 of My Life Radio. I am your host, Matt Blackburn, and today I'm doing a solo show on why I changed my mind about cod liver oil. So for the past couple years, I've been heavily influenced by Dr. Ray Pete and Adam Bergstrom and the work that they've done shedding light on the effects of polyunsaturated fatty acids or PUFAs, or as Adam Bergstrom calls them, HUFAs, highly unsaturated fatty acids. And I love the nuance and the detail that goes into that subject because there's a lot of things to consider. As Morley Robbins says, Iron is the match that ignites the lipid peroxidation process. I formerly believed that just PUFAs alone coming into the system would inevitably cause lipid peroxidation. And maybe that's true to some degree, but then we have to consider someone's vitamin C status, their vitamin E status, retinol, as I'll get into in this episode, there's a lot of context involved. And if you start to get into what's called, quote, pro-metabolic health or Ray Pete-inspired nutrition or whatever you want to call it, where you're centering your entire diet around PUFA restriction and minimizing the amount of long-chain fatty acids that you're consuming, trying to stick more to shorter saturated fats and monounsaturated fats. But you'll find that it's very difficult, and by doing that, by living that way, you actually can create nutrient deficiencies. For example, limiting seafood to once a week might not be best for everyone. Maybe some people that are severely iodine, selenium deficient, they might need seafood three, four, five days a week. So there's always context involved. And I think to hyper-focus on restricting PUFAs in your nutrition is not the way to live life. So omega-3 fatty acids comprise docosahexaenoic acid called DHA, icosapentaenoic acid, EPA, and alpha-linolenic acid, ALA. And cod liver oil contains DHA and EPA. But what I didn't know is it's actually less than pasture-raised eggs, generally. So something I didn't consider is the PUFA to retinol ratio. And as it turns out, cod liver oil has less grams of PUFA per unit of vitamin A than both butter and egg yolks. And there's also the context, which I didn't consider, of fermented versus unfermented and fortified cod liver oil versus non-fortified. And then this other piece that cod liver oil doesn't only contain polyunsaturated fats. It actually contains monounsaturated and saturated fats. It contains all three types of fats, which makes it different from fish oil. It actually makes it a whole food supplement. It's balanced. And what's really interesting is the last couple of years I've had debates off and on with Morley about this topic. And my friend Justin actually had a whole episode on PUFAs with Adam Bergstrom and Morley Robbins. And it was a really fun episode. I loved it. But none of those points that I mentioned were addressed, not one. And lately, I've been diving into the protective effects of retinol that Morley raves about, vitamin A, against lipid peroxidation. 
And I have a study here by the Journal of Clinical Biochemistry and Nutrition, 1995. It's called Dietary Vitamins A and E Affect Differently Lipid Peroxidation in Rat Heart and Testes. And what they found was that vitamin E was a more effective antioxidant for the heart, more protective in the heart for lipid peroxidation, and vitamin A for the testes, protect the testes from the effects of lipid peroxidation. And a lot of people don't realize that retinol, vitamin A, is actually an antioxidant. So retinol was discovered in 1913, and since then, they've discovered all of these metabolites that come from it, as Morley often talks about 13 cis retinoic acid, which is a hormone that's responsible for loading eight copper atoms into the ceruloplasmin protein via the two enzymes ATP7A and ATP7B. And without ceruloplasmin, you can't turn oxygen into water in the mitochondria to make energy. And without ceruloplasmin, you can't express the ferrooxidase enzyme, which is responsible for making iron less reactive. And if you want to dive really deep into vitamin A and retinol, highly recommend you go back and listen to my last episode that I did with Morley Robbins called Why Retinol is Essential for Your Health. He is a master at the vitamin A topic. So if you want to do a deep dive into the power of vitamin A and how critical it is for your health and what vitamin A deficiency does to your physiology, go back and listen to that episode. And on that note, in that episode, Morley asked me what was the main thing I noticed from introducing Rosita cod liver oil into my program. And I told him it felt like a light bulb went off in my brain. And he went on to talk about how retinol is an electron carrier in the mitochondria. So I knew that about vitamin K2 which is a quinone that carries electrons across the mitochondrial electron transport chain. But I had no idea that vitamin A could do that too. So there's multiple ways that retinol is increasing energy production in the cell. It's doing it in that way that I just talked about, but it's also putting more copper into the ceruloplasmin protein, which then allows you to do three things, clear exhaust, make energy, and kill pathogens. And you need ceruloplasmin to do all three of those things. And you need retinol to have ceruloplasmin. And in that show with Morley about vitamin A, I referenced my first Full Monty iron panel that he reviewed on the podcast with me and he said multiple times that my levels were indicative of retinol deficiency. And likely my mother being deficient in retinol. Because that's really the piece that people forget. You can actually be born deficient. We don't start off with a clean slate and perfectly balanced. It's the exact opposite. Most Babies born on this planet start off severely in balance because their mom was under stress and mom was not consuming high quality animal foods because they are a luxury and very hard to get high quality grass fed butter, let alone raw grass fed butter and high quality raw milk. How many mothers in the world are consuming that? It's a very small percent. And that's why most people are dealing with a chronic illness because right out the gate, we did not have a good start. So I have a bunch of studies pulled up here and I would like to go through a few of them on this show. 
And one that I found very interesting was a 1941 study. And like Morley, I love the older studies. I like that Morley emphasizes that, that the older studies were more true than the studies today. And for some reason, if there's a brand new study, 2020, 2021, 2022, for some reason that gives more credibility in some people's eyes. And to mine, it gives less credibility. I would rather see a study from the 30s, the 40s, the 50s than a newer one. So this one's from 1941 and it's called Massive Doses of Vitamins A and D in the Prevention of the Common Cold. Erwin G. Spiesman, MD. And I'll read the section here that fascinated me. Holmes and his colleagues showed a reduction of about two-thirds in the average, quote, lost time, being sick, of industrial workers due to colds and respiratory diseases when cod liver oil was added in. And Holmes felt that the reduction in colds was due to the retinol content, the vitamin A of the cod liver oil. Quote, although no proof of this could be offered. And later on in the study, they talk about giving isolated vitamin A as carotene and calciferol in oil. So concentrated vitamin D that's isolated. But what's interesting is the summary. They concluded that vitamins A and D in massive doses alone by themselves did not produce immunity to the common cold when they were given separately. But when massive doses of vitamin A and D were given together, 80% of the subjects showed a significant reduction in both the number and the severity of common colds. So what's interesting about cod liver oil is that it contains both vitamins A and D naturally derived. These aren't extracted. It's just from the liver purified. And the ratio is really important. It's a 10 to 1 vitamin A to vitamin D ratio. And if you get a full Monty iron panel and work with the root cause protocol, an RCP practitioner, they will tell you that your vitamin A to vitamin D ratio should be between two and three. So instead of this kind of kindergarten mindset of high or low, it's more important to look at ratios. That's a much different way of looking at things instead of I'm low in D, so I should take vitamin D, hormone D, secosteroid D. How about looking at the relationship with A? No one that praises vitamin D, which it is important, it does have powerful effects on the body, it must be heterodimerized with vitamin A, its counterpart, for your immune system to work and for your biological warriors to work. It's called the VDR and the RXR, and those receptors must work together. And this is based off the work of Trevor Marshall, PhD, and you can find his work at trevormarshall.com. A lot of really compelling research on autoimmune disease and excess vitamin D and what that does to the body. So with cod liver oil, what we're really talking about is a super concentrated source of retinol, of vitamin A. And by super concentrated, I mean... 3,900 international units of retinol per teaspoon. Teaspoon. That is hugely concentrated. And you won't get that in any food, including whole cod liver, because this is an extract of cod liver. It's the oil. And so it's the most dense source of retinol. And it's a guaranteed source of retinol versus with Grass-fed ruminant animals, it really depends on the soil and the grass quality. 
Whereas with the ocean, they haven't monocropped it or stripped it dry of nutrition. And so seafood, shellfish, cod livers, cod liver oil, these are very concentrated sources of minerals and nutrients. And unlike algae oil, krill oil, fish oil, cod liver oil is actually an ancient food. You could call it ancestral. And it dates back to the Vikings era. So the late 700s to the year 1100. And they consumed a ton of fish liver oil during the colder months, but they consumed it year round. And how they processed it was bringing water to a boil in a large pan and putting birch tree branches on top. And then the liver was placed on top and the steam cooked the liver and the oil dripped in between the branches into the water. And then the oil was skimmed off and that process was repeated over and over again. And what's fascinating to me is the cold months part of that story. So the winter months. So if we think about these northern latitudes, Norway, Sweden, just northern Europe in general, pretty cold climate, especially in the winter. And I grew up in San Diego, California for the first 30 years of my life, the first three decades. And then when I started moving to cabins in the forest, I became addicted to that. And there's only so far you can take that in California where the weather's pretty nice. And so I wanted to get the real experience. So I moved up to far north Idaho where the winters are pretty harsh, especially if you're in a specific micro microclimate like I am. And what I've noticed is minimizing polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFAs, this natural antifreeze that deer and other animals use to stay warm in the winter. They consume lichen and moss just for that reason, to get the polyunsaturated fatty acids, to get that natural antifreeze effect. I noticed that immediately with cod liver oil. So when I started taking it, we were still in winter. It was still dumping snow here around February. And I started consuming it in significant amounts, just taking a swig of the Rosita liquid with every meal. And I noticed very quickly that my hands felt a lot warmer and my whole body in general felt warmer. It actually did the opposite of what the Ray pe people say that it would do, which is lower my metabolism. It seemed to actually increase my metabolism and increase my body temperature. And so I think it's really important to go off your experience. There's a lot of people that live their life based on scientific studies and or forum posts. And both of those things are great references but you shouldn't base your life off of forum posts or studies. So I base my life off of my experiences. And sometimes, oftentimes, my experiences directly contradict things that I've read online or things that are talked about, even the, in the alternative, alternative health community. So what I've noticed with the pro-metabolic community, the Ray Pete community, is that most of them, from what I've observed, 99% of them tend to live in fairly warm climates. And if there is snow, it is very mild. And they don't live in a northern latitude like I do, where we get dumped on with several feet of snow every winter. So the theory goes with the Norse Vikings consuming the liver oil of codfish is that they did it to prevent vitamin D deficiency or hypovitaminosis D in the winter when there's not 
ultraviolet light. I have an alternative theory that it wasn't for the vitamin D because remember, 25D is a seasonal variation molecule, which means that it naturally falls in the winter. As Morley calls it, it's sunglasses. Vitamin D is to protect us from excess UV light. And so in the, in the winter, when we're getting yet less UV light, that filter, that sunglasses lowers because we don't need as much protection because we're not getting ultraviolet light. So my theory is that the Vikings were smarter than we give them credit for. They weren't worried about vitamin D because I think people back then knew how the human body works better than we do today. I think they were consuming it to better withstand the frigid cold temperatures during the winter months. That is my theory because that is my experience consuming it in the winter. And I don't just think it's the PUFAs in there. There is a lot of compounds in cod liver oil. It's not just DHA, EPA, vitamin A, and vitamin D. There's a lot in there. Remember, it's a whole food supplement. So there's a lot going on. There's something called dehydroretinol, vitamin A2 that's in there. There's different fatty acids in there besides DHA and EPA. You have oleic acid, which is a component of, of olive oil that's super healing for us. In fact, Adam Bergstrom says that we're closer to an olive than a fish. And cod liver oil actually has more oleic acid in it, about double the amount than the DHA and the EPA. It also has gadoleic acid, cetoleic acid. So it's far from just a fish oil because that is how people will smear cod liver oil and misrepresent it and say, oh, it's still a fish oil. It's just a fish liver oil. Well, show me a fish oil that actually contains naturally derived, not fortified, vitamin A and vitamin D, as well as saturated fat, monounsaturated fat, and then these other fatty acids that are not in fish oil. So the distinction must be made between fish oil and fish liver oil. One other nutrient I forgot to mention is phytosterol. And those have a wide range of effects. That's a big reason why we consume pine pollen. So going back to that study about colds, the phytosterols could be another factor way beyond the vitamin D that's so often touted. The story goes that the Vikings would have a drum in their home full of fermented livers and as the oil rose to the top, they used it for cooking, as a condiment on their food, to heat their home, to fuel the wick for their oil lamps, and they would take a spoonful whenever they would leave their house. And that's how I've been living the last several months, and it feels amazing. I'm a lot more resilient to the cold, and it feels like a really deep reset. It was really Morley Robbins and the RCP practitioner Paris Hodges that finally convinced me to change my mind on this subject. And the retinol piece was the main thing. And all this other stuff I'm talking about, the phytosterols, the oleic acid, all of the things I've been learning about since I've been taking it, are icing on the cake, but the retinol piece, the vitamin A piece has been blowing my mind with how critical it is for health. We're talking about not only a vitamin, but something that turns into a hormone in your body, 13 cis retinoic acid. And it works in tandem, not only with vitamin D, like I talked about earlier, but there's this bobsled team called the Fat Soluble Vitamins, A, D, E, and K. And the Weston A. Price Foundation has done a lot of research based on the dentist Weston A. Price's work on these fat-soluble vitamins, not only for fertility, 
but for immune health, for dental health, for overall health, how they all work in different ways. And I've been selling a mix to cough roll vitamin E product for the last few years. And I base a lot of my information on the work of the Shoot Brothers, S-H-U-T-E. And they helped tons of patients with heart disease, eye degeneration, mental conditions, infertility, all sorts of things, just with high-dose vitamin E therapy. And what's really fascinating is I grew up with skin conditions. I not only had acne and eczema most of my life, but whenever I would go into a chlorinated pool or a jacuzzi, I would get a rash, a redness on my body that was very itchy, very irritated, and I'm sure showering in tap water didn't help the situation. But my point is I had very sensitive skin and dysregulated skin. And when I started on the high dose vitamin E therapy, 3000 to 4000 international units a day, I had these eruptions of acne. This was about two and a half years ago. And I just pushed through it. So a lot of people will just lower the dose or stop. I just kept at it and maybe even increase my dose. And my skin was worse for a month. And I just hit the sauna hard. So I had one of those wooden saunas in my cabin in Big Bear, California. And I just sweat for an hour to an hour and a half a day. And I pushed through it. And I came out the other side with clearer skin than I've ever had in my entire life. But since I've been taking the Rosita cod liver oil, it's another level of skin health. It's like I've gone to a deeper layer of my skin health and same situation where I was breaking out. And that freaks a lot of people out when that happens. They'll usually stop because it's uncomfortable and it ruins their social life or whatever. But I've just embraced it the last several months. And if I have acne pop up, I know that I'm, filling this deficiency that I've had for my entire life and likely my mom had for her entire life. And who knows how far back it went, but you can be born vitamin A deficient because mom was vitamin A deficient. She could pass on deficiencies to her offspring. So it's really important to talk to mom, to see how she lived, to see what supplements she was taking see what she was eating, what vitamin A antagonists was she taking? Did she take vitamin D? These are really important questions to get the context of why you have what you have, whatever chronic condition it is. And look back at your childhood. I took a lot of days off school because I had a cold or a flu. I remember having a sore throat just off and on for my entire childhood. And I don't, I don't think that's natural. So I have a study here, uh, vitamin A and immunity to viral bacterial and protozoan infections, uh, John Hopkins university, uh, Semba, this is 1999. And it says perhaps more is known about how vitamin A modulates immune function than any other micronutrient. Uh, recent experiments using animal and various cell lines suggest that vitamin A and related retinoids modulate many different immune response elements, including expression of keratins and mucins, lymphopoiesis, apoptosis, cytokine production, fun function of neutrophils, natural killer cells, monocytes, or macrophages, T lymphocytes, and B lymphocytes, and production of immunoglobulin. So again, our biological warriors... 25D, storage D, gets all of the credit. But what about vitamin A? And this study goes through uh, measles, uh, respiratory disease, malaria, HIV and AIDS, tuberculosis, showing how vitamin A supplementation and vitamin A deficiency contributes to these conditions. 
So what about PUFAs and lipid peroxidation? Because we know that that decreases T cell presence and activity. Well, I have a study here, uh, 1993, vitamin A inhibits doxorubicin induced membrane lipid peroxidation in rat tissues in vivo. And the conclusion here is that vitamin A within the cell membranes increases the resistance of membrane lipids to peroxidation, uh, both, both uh, endogenously produced and induced in vitro. And so vitamin A may act as a physiological antioxidant in cell membranes where it is localized. And I don't remember having these uh, conversations with Morley when we were debating PUFAs. So this is fun territory for me to explore on my own because I've been talking about PUFAs for a few years now. I feel like it's my duty to educate people on the nuances of it and how retinol is just as important as vitamin A to protect against this process. And you can find a lot of studies if you just search vitamin A, lipid peroxidation. Here's another one, 1997. Helen, effect of vitamin A supplementation on cigarette smoke-induced lipid peroxidation. And the results indicated that lipid peroxidation induced by cigarette smoke could be protected against by vitamin A supplementation due to vitamin A's antioxidant activities. So although cod liver oil contains omega-3s, DHA and EPA, it contains a lot more vitamin A. So again, we're back to making your whole diet and all the supplements you take all about PUFA restriction. And that is not healthy because you can easily create a vitamin A deficiency that way. And you'll say, what do you mean, Matt? What about grass-fed beef liver? What about desiccated, freeze-dried beef liver? Raw beef liver. I eat that, you know, one to three times a week. I'm getting plenty of vitamin A. Well, a lot of people have told me that they took that for years and saw no benefit for their health condition. And the very week, in one week, that they added in Rosita cod liver oil, their condition improved, X, Y, Z, whatever it was. So there's a definite difference in effect, and I've felt this myself, eating liver almost every day for two years, and I was still vitamin A deficient. If you get a light bulb turning on effect in your brain from taking your first dose of Rosita cod liver oil, it's safe to assume that you had a severe vitamin A deficiency because yes, it could be all of the things working together, but it's really the vitamin A that is necessary for ceruloplasmin and for making ATP cellular energy. And I just want to touch on the whole vitamin A toxicity buzz that's going around, especially since I've been <laughs> talking about cod liver oil. And I'd like to preface this that fear is spelled F-E, which you can't have without iron. So a lot of people that are fear-based tend to have iron overload in their tissues. That said, I think toxicity of whatever nutrient it is is a deficiency of another nutrient. So when we're talking about hypervitaminosis A or excess vitamin A or vitamin A toxicity, to me, that just means copper deficiency. All these nutrients work together. Vitamin E protects from vitamin A excess. Vitamin K2 protects from vitamin D excess. And they all balance each other in multiple ways. And it's the same thing when we get to the mineral level. Everything's in ratios. And a well-known one is copper and zinc. And to block copper absorption, you need a 15 to 1 ratio of 
zinc to copper. But if you're less than that, you're getting less zinc and more imbalanced with the amount of copper, let's say a one to one, a two to one zinc to copper, a three to one zinc to copper, all the way up to 14 to one zinc to copper, you don't block copper absorption. And so understanding these relationships is very helpful and understanding how vitamins and minerals work together to support enzyme function, enzyme production is really important. I'll put a link below to one of my favorite articles from the Weston A. Price Foundation. It's called Vitamin A Amazing, and it has a lot of great research on retinol. And if you really want to get into the weeds on vitamin A, that's a really awesome post. And they also have good posts on cod liver oil if you just search on their website. And this is a big rabbit hole. So this was just kind of an introduction to come out and talk about why I changed my mind about it. I think it's nuanced. I think it's context. I think retinol is an essential nutrient, not only for the ceruloplasmin protein function, but also for immune function and working with vitamin D. So if you ever supplemented D3, it's safe to assume that you're deficient in retinol, magnesium, and probably potassium, copper, and all the nutrients that Morley Robbins talks about. And it does help to get a blood test, but just understand like iron, you could have 10 times more iron in the tissues than in the blood. It's the same thing with a lot of these other nutrients, copper and zinc, testing, serum, plasma, not very accurate because a lot of the copper's in your liver and in your organs. So the blood is not going to show that. And same with retinol. It's a good idea and it's helpful to see that ratio of A and D. And if you're in that sweet spot between two to three times, the vitamin A to vitamin D, that's great. But don't get too caught up on the numbers. I wish more people would get more in tune with their body instead of coming at it from this place of fear. And I read this study and this person saying it's toxic. Try it for yourself and start slow. And you don't have to go crazy like me, swigging from the bottle every meal multiple times a day. That's just what my body's asking for. But tune in to your body. And if it's asking for more, whatever it is, it's asking for more purely K, vitamin K2, give it that. If it's asking for more vitamin E, give it that. More Rosita, cod liver oil, take more. And on the other side, if your body's asking for a break, take a break. It seems like a lot of people have lost that connection to their intuition and their body. I have a ton of supplements here at my house, but I take them as my body asks for them. And I'll just be intuitively drawn to different supplements. And maybe I'll do a round of something for a month or two and then take a break. And that's a really powerful way to live. And it's a really powerful way to connect back to your intuitive knowing. So that's it. I'm going to end it here. And this is something that I'll be talking about for a while, I'm sure. I've had a few Mito Life Academy lives about it, where I go pretty deep into it. And you can find that on my YouTube channel uh, once a month. Usually it's the last day of every month. I'll do a live Q&A and I'll talk about the latest things that I'm trying. And it's usually something new and fun. So if you want to check out the cod liver oil, go to rosidausa.com if you're in the U.S. And if you're international, there's buttons on the site to, to bounce around and pick your country. And there's a lot of great info on there. I love their learn tab. Their blogs are great. They have the testing page because a lot of people have accused their product of having mercury in it. And 
there it is. It says Mercury ND, non-detectable. And they have cod liver oil liquid and the soft gels. So the taste is something that is a hit or miss for people. <laughs> the only thing I have been trying to get used to with the liquid is the burning sensation that I'll occasionally get in my throat. And the owner told me that that could be the extra virgin aspect. It's like drinking olive oil and it's going to have that burn. That means that it's the real deal. Uh, but there's also a trace amount of rosemary extract in there, which could do that as well. So it could be a mixture of those things. And you could just pour that into capsules if you don't like the taste and just pour the liquid into capsules and take it that way. Or they actually sell soft gels. So you could just buy that. And with the soft gels, you don't have to refrigerate them. But with the liquid, after you open the bottle, you should keep it in the fridge. And if you want to store it long term, you could put them in the freezer. And that's what I do is kind of like a prepping thing. And they also have ratfish liver oil, which is really enjoyable. Um, that is a really fascinating um, supplement that has what's called uh, alkyl glycerols and also vitamin A and D. And I definitely felt a brain effect from that. The name isn't very fun, ratfish liver oil, but I actually really enjoy the taste of that one. And then they also have bee bread, which is a great source of B vitamins and copper. And so I'll take a handful of that once or twice a day. And on your first order, if you use the discount code Blackburn, you should save uh, 10%. And again, how I take it is I just take a swig directly from the bottle after every meal. A lot of people message me and say they get the fish burps or they have some type of reaction to it. I would say have it with a big meal, ideally that contains fat. And if you still have an issue, then try my digest it all digestive enzymes with it and see if that helps. And if that still doesn't help, I would take less and the capsules could be very helpful for that. So instead of doing the liquid, try the capsules and just keep experimenting with all of those different combinations to find what works for you. And so I have the Rosita on my website, that's matt-blackburn.com. And I also have all of my other favorite products up there. Um, I can't talk about it much on social media because I've been uh, shadow banned talking about it pretty heavily. But methylene blue, I just call it the blue stuff now as like a code word. But there was recently a smear article, they called it fish tank cleaner. And that's when you know it's effective. Uh, for a lot of things. And one of my favorite companies is Troscriptions. They sell little trochies. And it's really a microdose. It's largely for the nootropic effect. And you could either stick it in between your cheek and your gum and get a release right to your brain. Or oftentimes I'll just swallow the whole troche and that works just as well. And I'll definitely be talking more about this substance on my Mito Life Academy where it's safer to talk about it and not get my hand slapped by the powers that be. It's a really powerful substance. Lately, I've been nebulizing it and it's a really strong pick me up, just mental clarity immediately. Really great stuff. Uh, I actually just added a new product to the website called the Analemma Water Wand. I learned about this from my friend Adam that owns the company Lifeblood. And he learned about it from Dr. Cowan. And it sounds really out there. So it's a water tube that's made of quartz. And inside the tube is what's called mother water. And supposedly it took them a few years to create this water. And when you stir this water wand into a glass of water or a pitcher of water, it actually changes the H2O molecules into a more crystalline 
structure. And I went into it with an open mind like I do with a lot of this stuff. It's a fairly affordable device to try out. And what I noticed is that the water uh, tasted thicker. So it seemed like it had more bulk to it. Um, really fast. I love anything with water and experimenting with with water and upgrading it. And there is definitely something to vortexing it. And I use the MRET pitcher still from Shen Blossom. And I basically, at this point, just use the MRET pitcher and then the water wand, the analemma. And that's my whole water protocol. And then I just put it in my water bottle. Maybe I'll ozonate that occasionally, but pretty simple. So if you want to try that out, the discount code Blackburn saves you 10%. And I might have them on the podcast to talk about it because I'd like to have some more water episodes being that I'm coming out with my own water filtration unit here this summer. It's been a real labor of love to do that. And my company is called MitoLife. You can find that at mitolife.co. And because of the whole Russian debacle, it's been really hard to get the purified Shilajit tablets imported from Russia. So we're super close and it will be back by the end of the month, hopefully sooner. So if you keep track on my Instagram, or the MitoLife Instagram, then we usually keep you updated with ETAs on there. But really appreciate your patience, and hopefully you have a stockpile from the last time that we were in stock. And as I mentioned earlier, check out my MitoLife Academy on YouTube. I put a lot of energy into that, uh, four videos a month, and then the live Q&A, and really fun to talk about my latest research and experimentation and what I'm learning each month. So that's it. I'm going to enjoy the last few moments here of daylight. I will see you guys on next Friday's show. Stay supercharged. <laughs>